So this is a very nice demonstration of the Vaishnava culture. Gardama Muni is a sage, so in terms of Varna Ashram designation, he is superior to the king. But here the sage is offering his respects to the king. Why? Because Emperor Svayambhuva Manu is a Vaishnava. And therefore he represents the Supreme Lord. Mm -hmm. Both in his own person as a devotee and also in his service. Mm. So Kardama Muni is showing us all that even though we may be in superior position uh, by ordinary estimation, still uh, we should see all Vaishnavas, all devotees, even the smallest devotee, as a representative of the Lord. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu himself showed this example. He is the Supreme Lord. He doesn't have to offer his obeisances to anybody. Everyone should offer their obeisances to him. This is why he's called Mahaprabhu. All the devotees are Prabhus. But Mahaprabhu, he's the greatest Prabhu. And so we worship him. And yet Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu offered his respectful obeisances to the Vaishnava devotees of the Lord. Mm-hmm. Of course, his mood, uh, it is said, because there were so many emotions in his heart. So sometimes he was displaying the mood of the Ishwara, the Supreme Lord. And other times he was thinking of himself as most fallen. Once he called for all the Vaishnavas in Navadweep to come and see him. And he told them that I am so disturbed in my mind because I cannot find Krishna. And he began to cry. He was telling, he was saying, just see my lamentable position. And then uh, he was told, I believe Gadadhar Pandit said to him, uh, Krishna is in your heart. And then Lord Chaitanya, he began to pull open his chest when he heard this. Krishna is when he was and then Gadadhar Pandit stopped him with sweet words. Don't do this. So just see, he is the Supreme Personality of God himself, the wisest of the wise. The leader of all the devotees. And yet he called all the Vaishnavas to tell them, I cannot find Krishna. I cannot see Krishna anywhere. Mm. He was asking them for his help. 
for uh, for their health. So, if Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu can show such loving respect for all the devotees, then this is the lesson for us. How much more we must do this? And because we are sinful and fallen. Mm. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he is the transcendental personality of Godhead. So, when he is uh, assuming that mood of humility before the devotees, that is because, well, first of all, we must say, because he loves the Vaishnavas. This is uh, the nature of Krishna. He comes under the control of his devotees. And also he is instructing everyone by his behavior. But Lord Chaitanya, he is independent. Lord Krishna is independent. He doesn't, he's not required uh, to take shelter of the devotees to be what he is. Because he's God. Still he's doing it. So then what is our position? Because we are fallen. Uh, if we do not attain the shelter of the Vaishnavas, then we are lost. Mm. This is a position of the tiny jiva in this material world. He's called Nitya Bhada. He is eternally conditioned. Mm -hmm. He has no way to help himself. Srila Prabhupada often said the living entity in this material existence is bound up hand and foot. So if our hands and feet are tied up, we can do nothing. We require the help of another. Mm, so this is why we must, yes we should, but also we must uh, offer our humble obeisances to all the Vaishnav devotees of the Lord. For they are just like kalpa riksha, like desire trees. And they are very compassionate upon all the fallen conditioned souls. So desire this comparison to desire tree means that we have so many desires, but as we know, they can only be fulfilled in Krishna consciousness. Material existence means that you cannot fulfill your desire. It simply means to be disturbed always. Mind and senses on fire with material lust. The Lord Krishna says, Dushpuranana Linacha. There's no way to put out this fire. You can go anywhere on this planet or any other planet 
up to the Brahma Loka. And Prabhupada explains there in the Brahma Loka the opportunity for sense pleasure is millions and millions of times more than here. But even you go there, you cannot satisfy this desire. And so therefore, just like Bhaktivinoda Thakur is singing in this song, Samksara Ghori. Therefore, one is always caught in the terrible clutches of Sangsara, repeated birth and death. Mm. So, if we want to fulfill our desires, they must be fulfilled in Krishna consciousness. But we are in Krishna unconsciousness. <laughs> so, but the Vaishnavas are there. And they are compared to Kalpa Vriksha. That tree, of course, the spiritual Kalpa Vriksha trees are seen in Goloka Vrindavan. There is also a kind of material Kalpa Vriksha tree in the heavenly planets. And sometimes, rarely, they also grow on earth. Mm. So people pray to Kalpa Riksha tree for benedictions. In Goloka Vrindavan in, or in Bauma Vrindavan in India, also we should pray to the trees, but only for devotional service. You see, in Vrindavan, the devotees are very often there embracing the trees. <laughs> because they are our friends. Srila Prabhupada said, tree is so tolerant. Mm-hmm. You can take anything from the tree. Take away the fruit. Cut the branches. Cut the whole tree down. It will not resist. Mm-hmm. So trees are... All trees actually. They're simply there to serve. But the trees of Vrindavan specifically are there to serve the devotees. They are our friends. Therefore, when we go to visit Vrindavan, that is a nice thing to do. Uh, please remember this. <laughs> In Vrindavan you can see the uh, transcendental forms of the Supreme Lord in so many uh, famous Vaishnava temples. You can visit the Samadhi of Srila Prabhupada. You can bathe in the holy waters of the Jamuna. Mm-hmm. You can see the places of Krishna's pastimes. You can roll in the dust. And also, you can embrace the trees. <laughs> because they are your friends. Mm-hmm. Uh, they stand there to help every devotee in their Krishna consciousness. Those trees are most dear to Krishna. So, 
if we show our love and affection to them, then Krishna, He becomes happy with us. So similarly, the Vaishnavas are called Kalpavriksha. They're like these trees in Vrindavan. Mm. So, they're the friends of all living entities. And they have the power, just like Kalpavriksha tree, to satisfy our desires, to really satisfy our desires. Because they have the power to give Krishna. Bhaktivinoda Thakur prays, Krishna se tumara, Krishna dite par, tumara sakati achi. That you have the power, you have, Krishna say tumara, Krishna is yours, saying to the Vaishnava, Krishna belongs to you, and you have the power to give him to me. Mm-hmm. So therefore, Dai Tava Pachi Pachi. Therefore, I am following in your footsteps. I am running after you. Mm-hmm. And I am crying out, Krishna, Krishna. Mm-hmm. So this is, should be the mood. Uh, this should be our understanding in the association of devotees. We have to want Krishna. Hmm. Just like a um, child calls out for the mother. Only the mother can satisfy this child. Hmm. Every mother knows that when the child starts to cry, Mm-hmm. Then there may be somebody else there, some other lady may be there. But when a child cries, there's a certain signal in that sound that I want my mother. <laughs> so a friend of the mother may be there and may pick up the child and try to comfort, but the child will cry and cry and cry, no, I want my mother. (laughs) So then mother has to come. She may be busy, but she has to come. That cry, it pulls her. Mm-hmm. Such an intense need is being expressed. So similarly, we must want Krishna like that. Mm-hmm. And we can get Krishna from the devotees. And in this way we should, as Bhaktivinoda Thakur says, Dait Hava Pachi Pachi. Run behind the devotees. Beg them. Please. Uh, give me your association. I'm very fallen and sinful. I have no hope without you. Hmm. Without the company of the Vaishnavas, I will be Again, captured by Maya, thrown down under illusion. So please, devotees of the Lord, uh, don't let that happen. And in that mood, we should try to render service to the devotees. Valuing every moment of opportunity that we can do Vaishnava Seva.
да оценяваме всеки момент за възможност да отдаваме възможността на себе си. So in this way, Lord Krishna will become satisfied with us. Hmm. Then he may correct our faults. Or he may punish us. It is up to him. But, you see, if one has connection to the Vaishnavas, then whatever Krishna, however Krishna deals with that Vaishnava Jana, he's called, the follower of the Vaishnava, it will be for the uh, ultimate benefit of that living entity. You see, it is Krishna himself who then deals with him. No, Without the Vaishnavas, who is dealing with us? It is only Maya. Hmm. So Maya's business is just to throw us deeper and deeper into illusion. But if Krishna pays attention to us, because we are serving the devotees. Then, yes, he may uh, bless us in so many ways. Oh, okay. He may comfort us. Or he may punish us. He may send us to hell. But the point is, is that at least it is Krishna doing this. Mm-hmm. And if in any situation we remain always following his devotees, whether in heaven or in hell, then ultimately Krishna will accept us. Mm-hmm. So this is the most important lesson in spiritual life. Mm-hmm. Hare Krishna, are there any questions? Demons. The demons who have somehow been blessed by what is called Kritina. They have Sukritina. What they? Well, Kritina. Kritina means they have qualification. Mm-hmm. The demons also uh, follow to a certain degree the Vedic injunctions. We're speaking of the Asuras who live in these heavenly under the subterranean planets they're called Vilasvarga. Mm-hmm. 
these demons are related to the demigods. Mm-hmm. The sons of Kashyapa Muni are there are two branches. Um, there are those who come from the uh, wife Aditi. They're called the Adityas, the demigods. And then there are the Daityas who come from his other wife. Diti. And also, there's another section of demons called the Danavas who come from another wife named Danu. So, Daityas, Danavas, and Adityas are actually from the same family. And equally powerful. So the Daityas and Danavas, or the demons, are envious. Of the demigods. So... Therefore, they have to have their own place. They can't live with the demigods because they're too envious. So they have, they've been given their own place called Bila Svarga. The Bila means under the earth. Svarga means heaven. Hmm. So one actually, it's not that you can enter Bila Svarga by being sinful. One goes there by being highly qualified but also envious. Hmm? Just like there are envious persons who are associated with this Krishna consciousness movement. There is a section, of course this is not very nice to talk about, but to give example. But there is a section uh, that split away from ISKCON and formed their own society, competition society. So, just like the split between the Daityas, the, the Adityas and the Daityas, there was some misfortune, some... This is the material world. <laughs> Things happen. <laughs> We must understand this. In the material world, don't expect perfection, especially in relationships. Mother uh, Kunti, Queen Kunti, she prays that all the disturbance in the world is a result of friction between people. It's compared to wind blowing in the bamboo forest and the bamboos rubbed together. And this friction causes fire. Mm-hmm. So unfortunate things do happen. Also between the devotees. Hmm. But if we are actual devotees, Vaishnava, then we will adopt this attitude. 
that I've been speaking of in the class. Always seeking the mercy of the devotees. Mm -hmm. You see, if you see a devotee as a representative of Krishna, then even that devotee is abusing you. Abusing. Still, this is Krishna's arrangement. I must deserve this. This is a Vaishnava attitude. Uh -huh. Not thinking, oh, why is this crazy person <laughs> bothering me? <laughs> I don't want to be near this person. I will break away. Mm -hmm. So, <clears throat> anyway, this is, of course, sometimes then those who are abusing us, uh, they are doing it only for materialistic reasons. So one has to tolerate. Uh -huh. But sometimes we also have to avoid if the material influence is too powerful. So all this requires intelligence to understand. This is the, this is the test, the very test of Maya on us. You are put into some unpleasant circumstance. What will you do? Huh? Maya is watching. Now what will you do? Hmm? So, what should we do? Well, we should take shelter of Krishna and the devotees. Hmm. So, anyway, there is a section that broke away from Iskon. Of course, if you ask them why, why did this happen, they will say, well, we were just taking shelter of Krishna and the devotees. <laughs> Other devotees were not in Iskon. Because we don't agree with the way things are done in Iskon. Mm -hmm. So, but actually, this is not really uh, a good argument. It sounds like it. Sometimes when they say this, then young devotees don't know what, they don't know how to reply. Because the thing that they are not understanding is that ISKCON is not a material society. ISKCON is the society that is favored by Krishna. Just like the Svargaloka where the demigods live. That, that place, that region, those residents, they're favored by Krishna because they're Vishnu Bhaktas, they're devotees. When Krishna comes, have you ever heard that he took, <laughs> he took the side of the demons? Mm -hmm. Even when Bali Maharaj surrendered to him, Bali Maharaj became the devotee of Lord Vamanadeva. Mm -hmm. 
Still, Bali Maharaj said, you're a demon. You belong in your place in the lower planets. Don't come up to the higher planets and disturb. Mm-hmm. So, Krishna has his plan for how this universe should function. Mm-hmm. So, that is why there is this special place, the Devaloka, where the demigods live. And they are the managers of all the cosmic phenomena. So also, uh, Iskon is not just some institution in the material world. Mm-hmm. It is favored by Krishna. Because Srila Prabhupada started it. We say, Naom, Namaom, Vishnu Padaya, Krishna Prishtaya. Srimati Bhakti Vedanta Shami He is dear to Krishna. Krishna Prishtaya. That if you have love for me, then you will stay within this movement and cooperate to make it stronger and stronger. So, so after understanding this, then where is there any argument that we had to leave Iskon to take shelter of another society of devotees? What what does it really mean? It means they left because they thought Iskon is a material society. So we cannot advance in Krishna consciousness by staying in Iskon. And it means that they are not following Srila Prabhupada's instruction. That we should show our love for him by working together in the society he started. There may be faults in Iskon. In the Deva Loka also, sometimes there are mistakes and problems. But when we speak of cooperating together, what does that mean? Cooperate together to solve those problems. Hmm? Not simply just reject. That's service to solve the problems. This is what Prabhupada desires of all his disciples and grand disciples. Hmm? Just like yesterday, I was reading a lecture of Prabhupada. He was saying to his disciples, uh, because the material world is full of envious persons, and not give them a reason, not or not give not a reason. They have their crazy reasons, but already, but not give them uh, strength. That they can criticize us, that you are not acting properly. Just see. <laughs> so this is service to Prabhupada. Mm-hmm. To to make his con. Uh, Prabhupada actually said, our devotees should be loved for their honesty. So it is our duty 
to make this ISKCON into an ideal society which everyone will respect. Mm. But if someone says it's too much, too many problems, I will go away. We will form our own group. Uh, and that means they've given up service to Srila Prabhupada. And we have seen, I have seen myself, personally, uh, it is well known, that these persons, they left ISKCON many years ago, 1982-1983 in the meantime after that devotees in ISKCON they rectified the faults that these persons were complaining about. But now they, they still don't want to come back. <laughs> and why is that? I have to say, because of enviousness. Mm -hmm. We've seen that. Mm -hmm. There leaders of this other group, they're always looking for some reason to criticize his con. And they, but they say, we would, we would come back to his con if you change certain things. <coughs> but how can we change what Prabhupada established? You see, actually their purpose would be to come back to ISKCON and turn this whole society upside down. <laughs> they, they argue that this GBC body is useless. Not, it's not just that the, the members of the GBC are useless, but the whole idea is useless. So, you see, this is the philosophy that they left ISKCON for because they went to another group in which that's the idea that there should be no GBC, there should just be one Acharya. Raj never appointed Alors, some Acharya. He wanted GBC body. And so, Prabhupada established the same in ISKCON. We have to be very cautious about these persons. Of course, we don't want to say that they're, they're not devotees. They certainly, because they chant Hare Krishna, they worship Lord Chaitanya. That means also they're very qualified as compared to the Mleches and Yavanas. They're respectable. Mm -hmm. But <laughs> there is some enviousness there. So we can see in this universe also that by, by some misfortune, as I was explaining, 
demigods and demons, they split into two camps. They were one family and then they separated. And demons had to have their own place. And their only business is to make trouble for the demigods. But they're also highly qualified. We have to understand that. It's not simply that uh, they're just sinful. That's not their qualification. That they're sinful. Because sinful persons will just go to hell. Of course, among demons, that tendency to sin is very, very strong. Because they're envious. So, they're very prone to falling down. They're very prone to losing all control of their mind and senses. And thus they defeat themselves. Yeah, but you're you're an educated person, so you're able to write. So if you because of physical inability, it's difficult for you to go out and preach. You can write articles, for newspapers, magazines, or write at least letters to people. One has to look for the opportunity, uh, who to write to, where things can be published. But that is preaching. Preaching means look for opportunity. Prabhupada has explained these six stages. So. so why don't you say, first of all, what you don't understand about what Prabhupada said. What do you mean you don't know? You don't know what the six are?
But why don't you first read in Prabhupada's books these six stages and learn them from the book? And then, if you do not understand, if you want a fuller understanding of what they are, how they work, then you can ask that question. We can ask. Yes, we can start asking. Please tell us what are the six stages of surrender. And we can say, now please tell us the 700 verses in Bhagavad Gita. <laughs> now please tell us the 18,000 shlokas in Srimad Bhagavatam. <laughs> But these are here in Prophet's books. <laughs> Should read them yourself. And then what you uh, have difficulty to understand or would like to have more elaboration about, then you can ask. I was saying the other day, Prabhupada gave us these books to read. They're <laughs> not just to sell. And then when preacher comes, we ask him, uh, could you tell us what is in this book? Because <laughs> we don't know. We just sell them. <laughs> Okay, she'll throw bad. Yeah. Yeah.